name is John Wilson. I am the Director of Content Marketing at AHP. And on behalf of AHP, thank you for uh, joining the webinar and for your interest in uh, our Report on Giving and Benchmarking program. So Mike will dig into the details in just a moment here, but I wanted to start by providing a quick overview of the different levels of AHP's benchmarking system. So at the first level, just for participating in the survey and submitting your data, uh, you receive access to a, an online performance scorecard that shows how your organization compares to other survey respondents for some key metrics. Uh, also, the PDF version of the report on giving uh, for this year comes out in early October. And if you submitted data, you'll receive a free copy of either the US or the Canada report. And at the second level, AHP offers a basic benchmarking subscription. And that's a $695 rate for AHP members for the subscription. And that level provides you with uh, some five-year trend reports that, com that compares your organization to a comparison group that you select. Uh, you can choose to compare yourself to all, say, all hospitals in the U.S. or all community hospitals, uh, or if you want to get very specific, you can pick, say, all U.S. community hospitals with fewer than 300 beds. Uh, so you have a lot of flexibility in selecting your cohorts. And this trend report provides comparison uh, of some high-level board monitors, such as net fundraising revenue, total expenses, ROI, cost to raise a dollar, uh, things like that. And at the basic level, you also get a report of the survey summary data, including averages, minimums, maximums, medians, uh, for most of the program areas on the survey. And then the third and highest level is our advanced benchmarking subscription. This is uh, $12.95 for AHP members, a little bit more expensive for non-members. And this gives you access to some detailed comparison reports by program area including annual giving, major, planned, corporate and foundation, uh, government, special events. Uh, these reports uh, are both for revenue and expenses. And again, you can choose your specific comparison group. And the advanced level also gives you access to some additional expense data from the survey, uh, including comparisons by constituency, uh, how organizations used the dollars they raised, uh, and more. Now, if you didn't participate in this year's survey for, uh, for FY17 data, we encourage you to uh, participate next year to get the free report on giving and your free performance scorecard. But even if you didn't participate, you can still subscribe to either the basic or advanced benchmarking. Obviously, your organization's data wouldn't be in the system, but you can still run the reports to get the benchmark numbers and to see how you compare to your peers. So with that very quick overview of the, the three levels, I'll turn it back over to Mike here to explain the reports in more depth and show you how you can access them. Great, thank you, John. I appreciate that. Um, as uh, the way John mentioned the reports is the exact way that I'm going to present things. I'm gonna show you, um, first of all, the scorecard that he referenced. Um, all of the options that I'm going to be showing you are uh, not going to be available to you. Uh, you'll be seeing um, basically what the screen would look like if you were an advanced uh, subscriber that John was talking about, but obviously it's just for demonstration purposes. So uh, when I get to the screens, I'll let you know what uh, what you would see based on um, if you you know just participated. Yeah, as John mentioned, you would get the report on giving and also access to the scorecard. So I'll, I'll point out when the, the menu looks uh, different than what you'll see uh, depending on your subscription level. So um, I'm logged back into the platform now. And again, if you did participate, um, you just basically go into the same platform um, that you participated on. And instead of choosing surveys, which is where you would have input your data, uh, what we're going to focus on now is benchmarking. And the first thing that I'm going to look at are uh, the predefined reports. So again, this this screen, if you did participate but did not subscribe, when you bring up this screen, what you'll see is the scorecard here. You won't see these options. Um, but if we click on the scorecard, 
And again, we have a demonstration organization here just to show you, to put some numbers at the top to show you how this would look. When you click on this link, you can see that there's a number of uh, comparison groups that are available. Um, the ones that we're going to focus on have to do with 2017. Um, so for the first one here, I'm just going to choose all benchmarking participants. It's the most robust number. We're going to it'll default to the fiscal year, which is 2017, and then we're going to include our organization. This will um, run across the top of your reports. So if you, for whatever reason, did not want to see your your organization's information, uh, you would just uncheck this box, and you could see the same information, but it just wouldn't have any comparison information from your group. Um, this gives you an introduction about the scorecard. And again, it's the kind of metrics that would be um, why you participate in this in the first place, you know, to look at uh, cash and production, you know, expenses, and then trying to, trying to see what your cost to raise a dollar or uh, ROI is for certain areas. So this is this first screen is the scorecard table. You can see that, again, we've chosen all benchmarking participants. So this is basically everybody on the platform who participated um, in 2017, and we're able to see, um, you know, the mean, the median, uh, different uh, percentiles. You can get a confidence level based on um, the number of organizations in the group, which is obviously going to remain constant regardless of what we're choosing here to look at. But the number of organizations actually reporting valid data does differ somewhat. Um, you can see it's pretty consistent until you get over to endowments here where uh, organizations may or may not uh, you know, be able to report that type of information. So it gives you a confidence level versus the number of organizations in the group as far as who's actually, how many are actually reporting in each area. Um, so that's kind of an overview. Then there are uh, graphs available as well. All of these can be, uh, as you see at the bottom here, you can download this um, as an image or you can export it uh, as a CSV file if you wanted to manipulate the data um, in Excel. And this is uh, the cash and production. And again, these are medians that are showing up here. Um, so you have all of the participants, and then, then your organization is going to show up, um, as you can see, uh, the demonstration hospital numbers are showing up here. So again, it, this is... Um, this is something that is available to you uh, simply for being a participant in the report. Um, one of the things that you can do with this, uh, as John mentioned, is you could create your own comparison groups. So what I'm going to do is show you um, at the, the level that we're at how you can do that. Um, but I think that it would be easier at this point just to go in and show you the the reports that you get for um, subscribing um, because I don't I don't want to uh, lose the um, the the uh, momentum here going back and forth from creating comparison groups so if you uh, can look at this one of the things that you can see from this if I showed you when I showed you the scorecard can see that that clearly is um, your only option is to choose a year. Uh, you have one year, you have a snapshot, um, which is great. I mean, because you can create comparison groups, as I mentioned. But again, from a trending perspective, it might be more interesting or more uh, useful for your organization to be able to look at uh, things over a period of time. So the basic subscription that John mentioned gives you access to the four areas that we're looking at here and the easiest way to look at this uh, to get an idea um, of what's available is to 
go ahead and look at the um, five-year trend. So we'll just go with the same um, comparison group that we did with the previous one, um, with the scorecard rather, and we'll go ahead and take a look at, at this report. Um, again, it, it automatically comes in Excel. This is going to show your organization, and as you know, we set it up here as the demonstration organization. But it's going to be um, a five-year uh, trend based on that. So you can start off with endowment. Um, you're going to be able to see, you know, the focus organization is yourself, and then how this compares over each of these, uh, the current year and then the previous uh, four years. Uh, again, this is something that you could download, you could um, incorporate into your own presentation perhaps, something that you're doing for a board meeting. Um, the, the trending ability with this is, is clearly the, the um, key. Uh, you know, you're able to see things over a period of time. And what this is doing is uh, obviously not every group or not every participant is the same for, you know, each of the years that we're showing here. But it, what it's doing is taking the current year and then the previous years and finding the common participants and then uh, inputting that information into uh, the trend. So let me go back to predefined reports here. Um, the other reports available, there's a survey summary. If you recall, uh, if you participated in this survey online, uh, if you were inputting your uh, expenses, uh, there was a, an option to choose either uh, summary expenses or to um, input the expenses in detail. And when you if you chose to input that data in detail, uh, there would be specific compensation data that you would have input for uh, people e either in direct or indirect areas that um, that uh, in different each each program each each area of fundraising that you could tie that back to. And that's what the survey summary because this will include the compensation data would be in. Um, I'll just go ahead and show you this one real quick. We'll go back to the um, report on giving with the all benchmarking participants. Um, and again, over the the information that you can see here is broken down the same way it is on the scorecard with a mean, a median, and percentiles and the number of organizations reporting valid data. Um, as I pointed out on the scorecard, those numbers were very close until we started getting into um, endowments. Um, this is the same type of thing, but since you're looking at things over a five-year period, you can see that the number of organizations, um, you know, for compared to the comparison group, when you're looking at it over a five-year period, it definitely is something that drops off um, as you would expect. Uh, and that's very very uh, obvious, but the um, the numbers that are here are very useful, and so you can look at you can look at it on a um, slide by slide basis, depending on what area you are uh, um, looking. You know, within the way that you uh, raise funds, everything's broken down um, over that five year period but based on the area where you're raising funds. Let me go back to the predefined reports. So that gives you kind of a flavor for the, um, the basic subscription as that John mentioned. And then the advanced subscription, you can see here that there's a, a wealth of choices. Um, if, if you did participate in the report, um, online, or if you're just familiar with the 
with the report on giving previously, these section reports are great because they basically follow the um, the actual survey. Each section is based on um, how you input your data in directly into the system. So let's choose um, gifts received. Uh, we'll go back to the um, benchmarking participants. I'll just keep everything the same. It's going to choose. It defaults to the previous, um, the current year, and then the previous. Um, but here you can see, based on the um, each section of the report, how you would be um, looking at this from um, the perspective of what you put in, and now you know how does that compare section by section to um, to the people that did participate in the report. Um, and again, based on the um, number of organizations reporting valid data over that time period, there, there's obviously going to be a difference here. But the common um, the common numbers between them over that five-year period are very uh, interesting, and obviously give you more of a of a really um, an ability to sort of drill down into each area within the report. Um, let me go back to the menu here. You also have the ability to go in and uh, look at uh, everything by the program area. Um, so these are uh, each area within this has a wealth of information of detail that would even um, be, um, you know, obviously a step up as far as the numbers that you're going to see from the basic um, subscription, um, although the, the basic subscription does give you that trending ability. So that's kind of the overview. Um, just trying to see is it, if anybody had any questions. Um, just let me know. Uh, otherwise, what I wanted to do, I think the probably the um, easiest thing to do at this point would be just to go in and, and start looking at comparison groups and creating them. Um, this, um, again, is the screen that you're going to see. For anybody who came in uh, late, what I was doing here was just um, showing the predefined reports that are available. And this screen is giving you, uh, this is what you would see if you were an advanced subscriber to AHP's, um, to, the, to the platform. This is what you would see. Um, if you participated in the report but did not subscribe to the database, if you logged in um, and chose predefined reports, uh, what you would see is just the scorecard. So, and I hope uh, if anybody came in, a couple of people, I think, dropped in there. So what I was doing was just um, showing what you would receive based on being a basic subscriber, subscriber and an advanced subscriber. So let's choose um, comparison groups now. And this is the screen you'll see. Again, this is something that, uh, that you'll see regardless of um, whether you choose to uh, subscribe to the database or not. Um, and you can see that down here we have um, public groups. These are the same groups that you saw when I was demonstrating the different uh, levels of subscription to the to the platform. Um, these are groups that everyone's going to see regardless. When it gets into personal groups here, this is what you would see and what you've created. Uh, no one other than yourself would see this, and these are the groups that, again, that you would create. So let's just go right into creating um, a comparison group. So the easiest thing would be to click on to this link here, the new group wizard. Um, 
what I'm going to do here is choose, um, we'll just leave it defaulted to all groups and I'll just choose um, US. You can see here you have a section where it says participation in survey variables. Um, this will default to the current year. Um, you can check any of the previous years that are listed here, um, but we'll just, for our purposes, we'll just keep it at 2017. And here's where you can get into um, finding things um, that would be specific maybe to your, or more specific to your organization. Um, I'm gonna choose number of direct fundraising staff, and then it'll ask you for um, a number here. So let's say between, um, let's say four and eight. I don't know how robust that will be. Um, but let's go ahead and try that. Okay, so based on that, uh, we basically will have 44 organizations that meet that criteria. So you could see the organizations. Um, we'll name this um, four and eight. And then down at the bottom here, we'll just hit save comparison group. So when you go back to the menu here, you're gonna see that that's the new um, group that we added here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that again. Again, you have um, four, 44 organizations. Excellent, okay. So then what you can do is come back to predefined reports and you can click on the scorecard here. And if for a comparison group, it's gonna give you all of the ones that are um, public, but it's also going to give you the ones that are that you've created. And the one that we just created is here, FTE, between four and eight. And we're going to leave this checked um, that we want our organization included. And then you can go to the slideshow and you can see um, at the bottom here, the total number is, uh, you know, the, obviously the number that we created based on that criteria. Uh, the number of organizations reporting valid data is very similar until you get over here to endowment where you see a drop off. But um, you've given the, uh, again, the mean, the median, and different um, quartiles and percentiles to be able to compare your data with your organization, with uh, with the organizations of the criteria that you've chosen, um, and again, this is the same. Obviously, you can download it. You can see here, or you can export it as a CSV file if you wanted to uh, get everything into Excel and start working with that. Um, let me go back to predefined reports here. Um, Actually, let me go to comparison groups. Um, let's say that um, this group that you created is something that you wanted to share um, with um, your with people within your organization. You can see this folder here that says shared groups. Again, the public group is the only thing that anyone would see logging in um, until they started creating their own personal groups and shared groups. But um, let's say that we want to um, move it from um, into, oh, well, that's right, the, this was the one that we created. Um, and then when you open up the, um, The organization, actually, you know what, I just didn't do that correctly. <laughs> I wanted to move this to shared. So 
So when you go back to comparison groups now, um, and then you open up the shared groups, um, you can see that that is now um, in that area. Um, if you did not want it to be in in that area, um, then you would just actually go back and um, you know move it back out again. Let me let me go in and actually show you how to do another um, comparison group here. We'll keep it at all groups. And we'll keep it at report on giving for the current year. Um, but we'll select a different uh, variable, um, say fundraising expense budget. And we'll just say between, um, I guess between, let's say 500,000 and I guess a million. Okay, that brings you to 22 organizations. One thing that I should mention here when you're creating these comparison groups, um, they have to differ from the previous one that you've created um, by at least um, six organizations. So uh, just from a confidentiality perspective, I'm sure you can appreciate that if you're going in here and putting, you know, between 500,000 and, and 1 million and then 500,000 and 1,100,000 or something, um, you can, since you're seeing a list of organizations that meet the filter criteria, you have to keep that in mind um, because if you're not uh, differing your search by something that would be uh, more reasonable based on the fact that, again, you know, from this, even looking at all groups, we're dealing with um, 200 or so organizations, um, then you're not going to be able to see, it's, it's not going to, create a comparison group for you based on the fact that the, the filter criteria is too similar to the one that you created previously. So just something to keep in mind so that it doesn't get uh, frustrating when you're setting this up. Um, I guess I already have this. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, okay. So you just name it and then save it. And, and here's the group that we created again, um, 22 participants um, in that group. And then you can go to the uh, predefined reports and the scorecard and choose that as your, uh, as your comparison group. And then you can view that. And again, this is what you would receive. You already have access to um, this platform. AHP, I believe, sent out the information to everyone, I think, um, probably a week or two ago. I'm not sure. So if there's, if if you're not aware of this as a, as a benefit, it may be that the email went to someone else in your organization if you did participate. Um, but uh, you would be able to log in and do exactly what I'm doing right now, um, just basically for participating in the survey uh, this past year. Um, let's go ahead and look at the, and again, this would be a basic subscriber. So this would be the um, $695, $695 level that John mentioned, but the um, five-year trends, and you could, the let's say the one that we just uh, created, the organizations, 500 to a million fundraising expenses, 
and then you can go to the report. You can see the ROI, the cash return on investment, production, and again, it's common organizations over that time period uh, that we have here, which is uh, 2017 going back to 2013. get back to the predefined reports here and and again if you were an advanced subscriber you can see the same thing um, based on whatever um, comparison group you wanted to create you can see the um, the same reports over that period of time um, let's go back to the comparison groups here the um, the organizations that you um, that are in your um, personal groups, I'm sorry, the um, the groups that you've created, uh, there isn't. Um, you could create as many as you like, um, but like I said, the it's important to keep in mind that they have to differ, um, just for confidentiality reasons. Um, the public groups here, you have access to all of these for the previous years as well. Um, so again, it's a, it's a great, um, there's a lot of information here. Um, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of details available and depending on the level that your organization participated at, um, you may or may not be able to see information across the top of all of these reports. Um, because if you say, if you did the mini survey, where you're just aggregating numbers for total cash, total production, um, and and um, expenses. You know, clearly you're not going to be able to see your information across the top of uh, any of these advanced reports. But obviously, you would know what that information is. So you could still, um, even if you didn't participate at a level that you felt um, your your information would be comparable at you would still still get a lot out of a subscription even at the uh, advanced level because all of that information is available to you internally it's just not on the platform so you would still be able to use the information that you have and then go back and um, and just um, input that information into the into um, whatever you downloaded as far as the advanced report um, clearly the more that you participate, the deeper the level that you, you know, provide data, you're going to get um, a lot more information available from your organization to compare to whatever comparison group that you set up. So, uh, obviously, that would be the the key as far as the amount of data that you can provide. But um, but again, the just for participating. You, you have the ability to um, create these comparison groups to be able to share them within your organization and be able to look at uh, metrics that um, will be more useful, I would assume, um, to your organization than, say, the static report on giving that you receive, because clearly that's um, not something that's interactive. It's, it's a great report, but it doesn't give you the ability to um, look at things that would be specific to your organization or something that would be um, helpful as far as the people within your organization to be able to see how um, efficient, how efficiently um, you're dealing with um, with everybody uh, that you're um, trying to compare yourself to. Um, that's kind of an overview. I didn't know if anybody had any questions, you can uh, type in a question, or if you if you have a question, please just let me know. I'd be happy to go back and um, create another group, or um, if you had some questions about the uh, reports themselves. 
just let me know. The, um, let's see, what else here? Well, let, let me go back to the predefined reports. I'll just cover one last thing here. Um, when you're looking at the um, scorecard and you're choosing whatever comparison group that you want, um, you know, we'll just choose this one that was already done previously. Um, when you start to um, create these different comparison groups, um, the ability to export this as a CSV file is key. Um, as I mentioned before, if you start creating groups and, and you're not differing your criteria, um, if it's, it's very similar, um, it's not going to allow you to create additional groups. And so um, if you are able to export these as you do them, you'll have the presentation there and it'll be something that, that you can use at another time perhaps. But uh, I think that's about it. Um, I don't see any questions here. So I'd just like to uh, thank everybody for, uh, for participating uh, today. Again, if uh, we've been recording this, so um, when, when it's over, uh, in the next day or so, probably tomorrow, I'll send a link out to everyone. Um, if you jumped in, you know, it, I'd already gone over something, um, I'll just send everything out to you in a link, and then you can review it or you can share it with people on your staff. And uh, I certainly appreciate everyone's time. I know it's busy back to school, and uh, we certainly appreciate your participating in the report on giving. If you did not participate this year, um, I hope that you would take advantage of, um, of uh, participating next year. Uh, we certainly would uh, welcome any questions that you have. If you want to, when I send out the link, uh, you'll have my email. Uh, please feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to walk you through anything on the platform or answer any questions that you have about the, uh, the survey in general. So thank you very much and have a great day. Bye-bye.